Once upon a time, there was a little protogen named Tulium. One day, Tulium was at his desk playing with a piece of string that was exactly one meter long. He first takes the string, and you know, every minute he does something very strange. He, take, he first takes the string and cuts it into thirds using infinitely small cuts and without otherwise moving the string. Then he takes the middle third and he discards it, leaving, leaving two remaining segments, each a third of the length of the original string, on the table. So in the place of the one meter long string are two one third length strings at the ends. And that operation in each of these operations takes in a minute. So in the next minute, he takes the two segments, cuts those into thirds, and discards the middle. He is left with four segments, each with one ninth the length of the original string. And the next iteration, he ends up with eight segments, each one twenty seventh the length of the original string. Now, if you kept doing this, the resulting shape of the of the segments will look something like this, where you can sort of see each row is an iteration of our little of the of the protogen doing the operation. If we this shape, this set of points, has a fractal nature to it, it is self similar and extends infinitely with infinite precision. For instance, if you looked at the left third of the bottom row in this picture, you would and you will quickly see that it kind of looks similar to the other rows, most most notably the next row above it, except it's just a third of a third of the size, three times as small. So now, <laughs> given that we know this is a fractal and we are just cutting away all this string, the question is, if Thulium does this infinitely, assuming he can, how much string is left after all, after all the infinite cuts? Your first guess is to say there will be no more string left on the table. After all, the, the amount of string decreases by a factor of, you know, decreases by a third each minute, so the string should converge to zero. But, Tolium being the progen he is, claims that he hasn't actually gone rid of any string at all. Let's see why. The string we can represent as a number line from 0 to 1, and each point on the string is a real number between 0 and 1. Let's represent the real numbers in base 3, so using the digits base 3 digits 0, 1, and 2, so that, for example, like what you consider a third is 0 0.1, and 1 half, which is the geometric series 1 third plus one ninth and so on is 0 0.111 repeated and so on. Now the cantor set, which we have created by cutting the string, is essentially taking out real numbers between zero and one with certain digit properties. So let's take a look at the string. The first cut takes over the middle third. So the range of this cut is at least a third, which is 0 0.1, and less than two thirds, which is 0 0.2. So we're take we're basically taking out all the numbers with first digit with the first digit after the after the radix point with well, that as one. So from zero point one zero 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 to zero point one 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 shy just shy of zero point two. <laughs> and similarly, in the next cut, the middle third of each segment is taken out. And because we already take because we already use sort of stratified based on the first digit, we're now looking at the second digit. So for example, the the segment on the left, which goes from 0 0.000 so on to 0 0.02 to do so on, is now reduced to, is now, we're now taking out the range beginning with 0 0.01000 so on and so forth, all the way to 0 0.12 so on and so forth, ending with 0 0.02. And on the right, we see the same thing, where the second digit is all one for the numbers in the range that we're taking out. And so by doing this infinitely, we end up with all the real numbers that have no ones in their ternary representation. There are only two digits, only two digits 
You know, like, you know what also has only two digits? The binary number system. So what we can do is we can sort of think, reframe ourselves and think about, think about the digits as binary numbers. So if you take a ternary number in the counter set with only zeros and twos, and you change those twos to ones, and you read that as a binary string, you get another real number. But this time, the real number you get covers the entire interval between zero and one, because all binary strings are represented this way. And conversely, if you take any binary real number between zero and one, and replace all the ones with twos, you get a ternary real number that is represented in the cantor set. <laughs> Which means that the cantor set, the string that our beloved protogen obtains after cutting infinitely many times, is actually the same cardinality, or size, as the real numbers from 0 to 1, which is the original string. We haven't actually lost any string at all, technically, but the total length of the string converges to 0. So, all this is pretty interesting, but before we take a look at why there, there is this discrepancy between cardinality and the length, let's look at a few higher dimensions. So, for instance, if Tullium instead had a square sheet of solid metal, and instead of removing the middle third cut of the metal, he instead cut the sheet into a 3x3 three three grid of squares, then removed the middle square, and each iteration after that doing the same thing, but smaller, you end up with this kind of looking shape. This was rendered using an old Java program that used a stochastic method to render this shape. And this, this fractal is known as Sierpinski's carpet, you might know Sierpinski from Sierpinski's Triangle, but this one is called Sierpinski's Carpet. And this fractal shape is characterized by, by the unit square, so from 0, 0 to 1, 1, where the ternary digits of each coordinate has at most one digit in each slot has value 1. And if we go into the third dimension, where Tullium, where Tullium has a solid cube, and each iteration split the cube into 27 smaller cubes, then remove the centers of each face of the centermost cube and the centermost, we get the Menger sponge, which is what you see right here. This was rendered in TypeScript using WebGL and some shaders. But the characteristic of the Menger sponge is similar to the Sierpinski's carpet, where each core, where among the three coordinates, each each triplet of same place digits has at most one in ternary. And each of these fractals has a volume that converges on zero because we, we are removing matter from it each iteration. And yet, each of, and yet, because of the same reason that the Cantor set has the same cardinality as the numbers from zero to one, the Sierpinski's carpet, the, uh, the Sierpinski's carpet and the Manger sponge have the same cardinality as the square and the cube that they originated from. And just a little side note, if we take a look, if we instead remove the digits, the, remove the numbers of the coordinates so that we end up with coordinates with, with no digit ones, we get what is called the Cantor dust, which it kind of looks like this. You, you're just taking the corner pieces instead of taking the corners and the edges. So now, why is it that the area, volume, the length of these sets converges to zero while the cardinality remains the same as it was before? Well, that has to do with a concept called measure. In simplest terms, the measure of an interval from A to B, whether that be open, which means like A is less than X is less than B, or closed, as in A is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to B, is its length, B minus A. And for a rectangle or rectangular prism, denoted by coordinates falling within certain ranges, as with the Menger sponge, it's its area or its volume. Now, an interval contains all, its, all the numbers that lie between the endpoints, but we claim that the Cantor set actually has no intervals and therefore has measure zero. So consider two numbers A and B in the Cantor set, where A is less than B, as an example is shown below. Now, let's find a place value, a digit position, where the digit in A is zero, 
but the digit in B is actually two. And this, these digits are highlighted in our little, di little diagram here. Now, if we take these two numbers and we construct a third number, C, with the same digits as, for example, A, but with that zero turned into a one, this, this middle number is no longer in the Cantor set, and yet it's between two numbers in the Cantor set. This means that between any two numbers in the Cantor set, there is always at least one point outside of the Cantor set. The Cantor set has no intervals. It is only constructed of points. And therefore, it has measure zero and its total length converges on zero. And by the same property, we can see that both the Sierpinski's carpet and the Manger sponge also have area and volume zero, but infinite cardinality.